I'm Deborah Purock. Thank you for joining me for this very special edition program about the situation of Catholics and Christians in the Middle East. I'm joined by an Iraqi Christian Catholic man by the name of Franco Paulus. That doesn't sound like an Iraqi name, but it's because he was born and raised Catholic, as many were in his time in Iraq. I'd like to begin by welcoming him to the program. Thank you. Franco, it's great to have you. You were born in 1957 in the city of Mosul, uh, which you said at that time was a third Catholic? Uh, we we born uh, Christian Catholics. We, we did not convert to Islam. We, right. That, How, that what what I mean. percentage of Mosul, though, was Catholic? Oh, uh, nine, uh, uh, until 1950, um, the percentage of Christian in Iraq or in Mosul was up to 30 percent. One third, yes, one yes, third one of the third. population. Yeah. And now there are no Christians there left. There is no. You can, uh, there are not more than uh, 250,000 Christian in all over Iraq. All, all over Iraq. Yes. And uh, we're purposely not telling our viewers where um, we're doing this interview. We are in Europe but we don't want to endanger you in any way because there is a real threat, Muslim threat, that you could be persecuted in some way simply for speaking out for the Catholic faith. Absolutely, yes, because um, no one can criticize, not even uh, uh, criticism. Uh, no one is... Um, allowed to criticize the uh, Muslim faith, yeah. Yes. No one is allowed to uh, criticize Islam. Period. Yes. It's very dangerous. To it's do very that. dangerous. You might endanger, uh, put your life in danger. Um, you fled Iraq twice, actually. You said the first time was when you were a young man, and you weren't an actual danger per se, but you were persecuted. You said that's right. Um, uh, 1980, I had to flee Iraq because we have been harassed by Muslims. Uh, I mean, the, in what the, way? In what way? So, uh, for example, when uh, USA invaded Iraq at that time, uh, they, my mother told me when she went to buy groceries from, from their neighbors, uh, the, the man told her, go to George, George Bush, Bush to let him to sell you the groceries. We don't sell any Christian nothing. So you couldn't even get food? Not even that at that time, yes. But I fled Iraq in 1980, um, before, long, long before um, the invasion. The invasion of uh, when, when Iraq uh, went into Kuwait and had been drove, uh, driven out of Kuwait. Uh, at that time, the, the troubles were, uh, there, are more, there were more troubles than 1980. But I, on, on, uh, personally, I faced uh, harassment by Muslims because um, I was always... Um, uh, uh, my, my tension was on, on the West. I, I've been uh, speaking uh, German, uh, working for, for German companies there, and so they might have uh, considered me as a spy. Plus, you were Catholic, which didn't help. Uh, yes. Um, well, Catholic, uh, I mean, uh, officially they are not allowed to harass Christians, um, but privately it's different mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they are asked for by their, they are driven by their ideology to uh, kill Christian or any, any non-Muslim. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. I thought it was coming from... Uh, the government, but you said the government actually didn't sanction this persecution per se, at least not initially. It was a cultural thing that came from this, this, this Muslim ideology. That's right. Officially, they, they were not allowed to do that. But they did but, it anyway. Yeah, but they have the faith, they believe that is something uh, good for Islam. They have to drive all unbelievers out of uh, Islamic countries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, 1980, we, the percentage of Christian Iraq uh, I mean, not the percentage, uh, there were 1.3 million Christian in Iraq. And now only 260,000. 
Yes. And you said every day the airports are full of Christians leaving. The borders of Iraq, the airports are full of Christians. They are just leaving uh, the country. They, because uh, they don't have, um, they left, they lost everything they had. So they have no future. And no reason there. to stay. No reason to stay. Uh, not even, I mean, uh, all of them, they are uh, uh, lost their relatives, their friends, so there is no, uh, nothing to incent them, them to keep them in Iraq. You, you, after a certain amount of time, you said when Saddam Hussein was driven from power, uh, you decided it might be safe to leave Europe and go back to Iraq. That's right. Uh, how did that turn out? Well, uh, after uh, Saddam Hussein has been toppled by the U U.S., um, um, the USA, they promised they will convert Iraq to a, a model of democracy in the whole of Middle East. And you're smiling because obviously that didn't happen. Well, when I, when I was there, it, it was everything going okay uh, under the prote protection of the uh, U U.S. Army. Uh, Muslim, they abducted Christian every time, uh, killed them, massacred them, but um, all in all, the Christian uh, have been living somehow uh, peacefully. Um, they all moved to concentrated on, 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 for example, on Karakosh Which is or where Ankawa. you moved back to. That's right. And um, they have been living uh, peacefully there until 90, uh, until 2014, uh, when the IS, um, ISIS mm -hmm. came and invaded Mosul. And we should say that Mosul will we'll tell the story. You barely escaped with your life and your family's life, but Mosul was only 20 kilometers, which is uh, about half that in miles, um, away from where you lived. And you said you got up, you thought it was a normal day. Um, yeah, well, let, let, let me put it this way. Imagine. Uh, you wake up in the morning at 9 o'clock and you, you intend to enjoy your breakfast uh, with your family in the garden of your house and before you leave to your work, to your office, you decide to swim a little bit and before you jump in the water, you hear something outside on the street, it's getting louder, you run away, you run away out, uh, to see, to, to find out what is going on. You see a a young woman uh, between 20 and 25 years old. She is carrying a babies on her uh, arms, and she is screaming, uh, "Daesh, ejo, uh, Daesh, ejo." That, that was, uh, means uh, the IS uh, just arrived. They killed, they massacred all Christian in Mosul. They killed so, all Christians in Mosul. That's right, and uh, you have. They asked all people there to leave and to, to uh, seek a safe haven somewhere else. So somewhere, somehow she escaped, she ran she to She managed to, to escape uh, and, and uh, seek refuge in Karakosh as the, at that time. So you were only maybe 12 miles away, something like that, and you had to decide suddenly, right. what am I going to do? That's right. So uh, I, I was just stunned like uh, all other people there. Uh, everyone ran uh, into his house and got into his car and, and just drove away. Uh, the same uh, I, did I. Uh, I ran into my house. I told my kids, my wife, get into the car. We're leaving. We, we're leaving now. We, we have to, to, to run away. So my wife just, she gathered some, some uh, important things like pajamas or something like that and, and we, we, we drove away. Uh, within in one hour, a city of 50,000 inhabitants, it uh, turned to like a ghost. Ghost town. Ghost town. Everybody everyone disappeared. disappeared. Um, everyone has been heading towards uh, north of Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, it is um, well there. It's uh, somehow a savor because. The government of the, ter of the Kurdish territory, uh, it is now um, it's Muslim, kind of, of but, secular. But it's secular Muslim. So yes. they're not so, they're not into Sharia law. And no, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. 
But uh, I mean, uh, the Sharia is the aim of all Muslims. Now, this is very important to stress because we hear over and over and over in the media that we shouldn't judge all Muslims by ISIS Muslims, that the religion is very peaceful, and that we're not being fair to Muslims. And you say in the Quran, it actually says that Muslims are supposed to lie if they're in the minority. That's right. So according, that they can achieve a majority. Exactly. According to Taqiyya, uh, that is um, uh, the prophet of Islam, he demand Muslim to lie whenever they are in minority. Until they get strong, they have, that's, they must actually to kill and eliminate everyone who is not Muslim. And you said it says that as well in the Quran. It's written in the Quran, yes. Can you read it that is, bit for me? Yeah, sure. Um, it is. I'd like to hear it in the original because I'd okay. like to hear the language. Uh, Surah Al Umran. Uh, that, that means uh, uh, verse 54 of uh, Surah 3. وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ That means uh, the disbeliever conspired and Allah conspired too. But Allah is the, the best secret planners. They are the best secret planners. This is about lying. That's right. When you need to lie. Yeah. And uh, also this uh, cleric, an Islamic uh, cleric, it's called, his name is uh, Ibn Kathir, uh, said of original Arabic, um, uh, It means uh, somehow, let us pretend a smile for the unbelievers while we curse them in our hearts. That's pretty serious stuff. Yes, and what it you, sure is. And what you've told me is that um, Europe, well, first of all, you said uh, Christianity in Iraq will disappear. It, disappear, it will disappear because before uh, uh, Islam has emerged, uh, the whole region was uh, Christian and, and, and Jewish. And this goes back to what, 70 years after Christ, you said? We are Christians since uh, 37 after Christ. 37 AD. That's right. And we, uh, the first churches are being built in Mesopotamia, uh, the year 70. The year 70. So we, we, and we knew. And this was part of Assyria, which was Babylonian and, and so on in those days. That's right. We, we once controlled the whole world from India until uh, Cy Cyprus. And our language has been spoken uh, through those as, as an official language from, from India until uh, Cyprus, until Islam emerged and uh, eliminated even our language. So you were Catholic before Europe was Catholic? That's right. Way before. Jesus Christ is born in Jerusalem, not in London, not in Vienna. <laughs> so we, we, are, we knew Christianity before European. And you said it was um, unlike, for example, China, which was difficult to convert because they saw it as a foreign influence coming in. Um, the idea of Jesus Christ as God and man was easily accepted. Where That's right. Do you, uh, you come from? We as a Syrian, uh, we have all, always um, bef we, this idea of uh, being a human being and God in this, at the same time. Uh, the king of Assyria was, was at the same time uh, as a God, considered as a God, and uh, even uh, also a, a leader. So when Jesus Christ came, we, um, we, would, we didn't find any difficulties in understanding this idea. And so Catholicism was embraced widely. That's right. Did we, it become a state religion? At that time, yes, sure. But we, uh, after Muhammad uh, emerged, we paid a big price for that. Well, Persian, they also suffered under Islam, but they converted to Islam. That's why there's a state name, it's called Persian. 
till mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. We didn't... Um, you didn't convert. We didn't convert, that's why uh, the price was higher. And now, today, I am one of the last Christian who is leaving Iraq. We're going to stop right there. We'll be back in a few minutes. Please join me then for more on the situation of Muslims and Europe and Christians in the Middle East. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining us after the break. I'm Deborah Pirock, and this is a special edition program talking about the slaughter of Catholics and Christians in the Middle East. Joining me is my very special guest, Franco Paulos, and I want to thank you for staying with us. Uh, as we went to the break, you were talking about the Quran and how the Quran says that Muslims should lie when they're in the minority, and it also commands uh, it is not a peaceful religion, uh, maybe religion isn't even the right word, it's an ideology, and it commands um, that they kill in the Quran people who are not, uh, well, who are of any other religion, not just Catholics. Okay, let's make clear one point at the beginning. I am not here to instigate hatred against Muslims. I consider Muslims as a victim of their ideology. Uh, Muslims have, according to their ide ideology, to kill everyone who is not willing to convert to Islam. This order is mentioned in, in Quran uh, more than 25 times. So it's not even just once. No. Once would be, a, would be bad enough, but 25 times in the Quran. Uh, that's not all. Oh. Uh, it is always also mentioned in the uh, Sunnah, which is the biography of uh, Muhammad. It's mentioned about 102 times. Uh, the God of Islam and the Prophet of Islam, they ordered and demand Muslims to cut uh, throats of non-Muslims. We're hearing so much about beheadings recently. So That's this is, right. This is all according to the orders of Muhammad they centuries are just ago. Practicing their religion, they they are driven by their ideology. I don't think they are uh, that they are born as evil human being. Um, but they become enculturated by this ideology. They get indoctrinated uh, ever since the birth. They learn from kids. Uh, how to hate uh, Christian or Jewish. It is mentioned in, in Quran. I can recite uh, one of these uh, verses in Quran. Mm -hmm. Sure. It is uh, Surah, it's Surah uh, 47, which is uh, Surah Muhammad. وَإِذَا لَقَيْتُمْ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَضَرْبُ الرِّقَابِ Which it means if you confront the disbeliever, strike at their neck. That's strike at their neck? Yes. And this language is Arabic? This is Arabic. This is Arabic. It's original Arabic. So you don't have to, uh, you, don't, you can't wonder why, why they're doing that. They are just uh, fulfilling the commandment of, of their um, prophet. They're just practicing their religion. Tell me what happens when ISIS comes into a place like Karrakesh where you were. Uh, well, we, we ran away uh, before, before they entered the, uh, the city. But the what, city. If you, what if you hadn't gotten out in time? What would they have done? Uh, in the meantime, they, they, they destroyed everything. They demolished churches. They, uh, they put bombs everywhere in, in the houses. Yes, everything is... Uh, Who they, did they kill? Everybody? Uh, uh, they, the ones who did not um, manage to escape, uh, they have been trying to force him to convert to Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, once the ones who did uh, not obey, they have been massacred. Massacred. Yes, uh, they took our uh, children and women. They raped kids and and women, and then they sold them as slaves. They in, sold them as slaves. Yes, in Mosul. So they're basically sex slaves. That's right. And then uh, the children, I guess, are further indoctrinated and they continue to try to turn them into ISIS fighters? Well, you, you can see in the social media how they are um, indoctrinating the kids, how to slaughter uh, the babies of Christian. 
I saw a, a picture of a young boy who was holding a gun standing next to an ISIS fighter and the child was being told to shoot, I don't know if it was a Christian, but someone who was not a Muslim. And it struck me as um, almost unrealistic, it was so strange, and you're saying, no, this happens all the time. That happens all the time. When they abduct um, uh, a Christian child or uh, Yazidis or whatever, they tell him, you are going to die anyway. So. If you convert to Islam, to Islam, mm -hmm. and you die as a Muslim, you are going to go to heaven. To paradise. To paradise. What a terrible thing to tell a child. Yes. That's the way how uh, uh, motivated the kids to kill other non-Muslims. Because they think that at least maybe they won't die so soon. Um, and you said all the men are immediately killed as well as the elderly because they don't want to deal with them. That's right. The men would be a threat and the elderly would hold them back, I guess. Yes, that's right. Uh, that's what they did in Mosul. Uh, or they killed all elderly men and uh, women. The other, uh, the young girls and babies, they saw them and they put a, there was also a, a price list. A price list? Yes, uh, for, for a, a girl between 10 and 20, uh, their price was, the price was about 220,000 Iraqi dinar. How much which is that? It is about 150 US dollars. And was, oh my, and that was, is that the most desirable age because they're young? Yes, that's the highest price. Oh, that's the highest price. Yeah, and the lady between... $150 for a woman, that's nothing. That's, that's right. how they uh, value women. Yeah, the, a lady of uh, between 40 and 50 years, uh, the price was 50,000 Iraqi dinar, which is 22 US dollars. Oh my gosh. We hear so much about how women are used by Muslims, and you said in the Muslim culture, the man is the head of the family, and, for example, if he's a Muslim, the whole family has to be Muslim. It's not a choice that they make. It's just in the culture that they follow and do what the father and husband says. You can't choose uh, your religion when you are born as a Muslim. Uh, the father, the, the brothers, they have the right to kill their brother if he convert to other religion. That's why I always say, um, Islam is not a religion in that sense, because you can leave uh, Christianity, you can leave uh, uh, Buddhism, Judaism, all over uh, all all of the other re religions. Yes, it's a free not, choice. but not Islam. Islam, they Islam will kill is, you. Yeah, it's it is as is rather as a a, a totalitarian totalitarian uh, system of control. Uh, they strive the control of uh, the entire world. You said you think that in a certain amount of time there will no longer be Christianity in Europe? Yes. Uh, my uh, prognosis for, for the future in Europe, uh, if the politician of Europe, if the people in Europe, they did not break the wall of the political correctness. Mm -hmm. Which is very, very strong here. That's right. Uh, they, the European community and all over, even, even the Western world, like, like the USA or uh, um, Australia, Canada, uh, they will not survive this century. You said it is so bad that you don't even feel safe in Europe anymore. There are so many Muslim immigrants. That's right, uh, because um, Islam is always demanding. They are it's, 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 uh, asking for more rights, um, on the other hand, is giving nothing. They get money from foreign countries like Saudi Arabia, and they use them to build mosques and schools and to indoctrinate their children here. How is that possible? Don't they have to go to the schools of that country? Well, uh, it's um, quite dangerous. Uh, Saudi Arabia is, fun is, is uh, pushing billions of dollars to- Billions of dollars. To, to Islamize the whole world. 
in Europe, in South America, ever, all over the world. You see, um, when a Christian, when a Muslim uh, in, intend to convert to Christianity, mm -hmm. he will be faced of paying, uh, uh, paying um, um, taxes for the, for the church. Yes, which is the rule in Europe, that if you're Protestant or Catholic, Protestant usually meaning the Lutheran church, taxes right. are taken away, unlike in the United States, they're taken automatically out of your paycheck. Exactly. And so, so, yeah, so how does that influence Muslims who want to become Christian? They don't, they think about it, but the, at, the, at, at the end, they change their mind because they are not willing to pay any taxes. Wow, and this is, of course, the same problem with a lot of Germans, Austrians, other countries, where they're leaving the church, not necessarily because they don't like the church, but because they don't want to pay this burdensome uh, church tax. Exactly. That's, that's the, the, one of the major reasons why Christianity is, is decreasing in Europe. And, and there's uh, one more problem. I saw in the school here um, the students, the ch children in the school, they are not taking part at the Catholic or, or, or the, the religion lecture. Oh, lesson. No. which we should explain is part, uh, religion is in public school here, uh, unlike in America where you would have to go to a private Catholic school for That's instance right. to get Catholic instruction. So the Muslims just don't go? That's allowed? The Muslims, they don't go. They, they have uh, the freedom to do that. Mm -hmm. um, because this is a democracy is, it is a, They're practicing the democracy. Um, Muslim, Islam is, is uh, using the democracy in Europe to destroy the democracy, democracy afterwards if they get out uh, the range of minority. If they get uh, stronger, they won't tolerate uh, the Christian to uh, practice their religion. Mm -hmm. That's what Muhammad self, uh, did uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, in the year six, 627, Muhammad killed by his own hands 800 Jewish from, from Banu... 800 Jews. 800 Muhammad Jews killed. by his own hands uh, from Banu Quraida. Um, so how, how do you expect from follower of a prophet who, who, who kills himself people. Yeah, killed people? Who killed people. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't have any uh, good... Um, I don't expect any good... Uh, future for, for Christianity in Europe, or on the whole, whole world. What, what numbers of Muslims are here in Europe? Do you have any idea how many? Oh, uh, according to the media, there are 50 million, uh, 60 million Muslims living in Europe. So uh, the birth rate of Muslim is three times higher than the uh, than birth the rate of Christians. the nationals in most countries, right. So, that means in one generation, uh, the 60 millions will triple itself. That means we will have uh, about by 2030 uh, about 180 million. 180 million Muslims. Muslims in Europe. So, if Europe is not able right now to control the violence uh, of 100 uh, of, of 50, 60 millions Muslim, how, how will it's they going? Ever how it's going to, to, to manage to do that uh, in, in uh, about not even 13 years. When they reach 180 million. I tell you, what, what, I go, what, what are they going to do? They are going to control the media, they are going to control the European Parliament, and they will force to implement the Sharia in Europe. Sharia law. We're going to take a break right there and we'll be right back. I'm Deborah Pirock. Thank you for coming back for this special edition talking about the situation of Christians and Muslims in Europe and the Middle East. There are many, many martyrs already to Christendom, and there are going to be very many more from what you've been telling me. Um, one thing that bothers me a great deal as a woman is the way Muslims treat women. You said Mos uh, Muhammad had, uh, I guess it's it's debatable, but it, as, 
as few as 13 wives and possibly as many as 99 wives, but that was just the wives. There, were all, there was also a harem, in other words, sex slaves as well. Um, this, is, uh, a, this, this is using women as a consumable item, an object, not as a human being. Is that how Muslims think? Yes. Um, the first wife of Muhammad was, um, his, her name was uh, Khadija bin Khwailid. She was 49 while Muhammad was 24. The age of a mother. That's right. So and she was a Christian. She was uh, the cousin of um, Waraka bin Nofal, which is uh, the, the teacher of Muhammad. Okay. Uh, that means her, her uncle was the bishop of, of, uh, of Mecca. Wow. Okay. So. Which was Christian. Yeah. Sure. Uh, when she died, he married Aisha. She was only six years old. Six years old. But according to the resources, the Islamic resources, he consummated his marriage with her after she was nine. So by today's standards, that would be sexual abuse and, and, and uh, pedophilia, really. It is so, uh, but um, you can't say uh, that if, um, in front of a Muslim because he will say, no, he, he was a, a prophet, so he, he is could do whatever eligible he to do everything he, he wants because that was a, an order from, from Allah. Mm -hmm. I've seen, I've seen um, stories in the West, um, it's happened once or twice in the United States, but it's still very rare, where a daughter becomes westernized and the Muslim family does not uh, approve, and so they kill her. They do an honor killing. Um, uh, an honor killings in Islam is just a standard matter. It's standard. It's Nobody even standard. thinks about it. Not even uh, is allowed. Not even to think about it. Yes. Uh, how do the mothers? I, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. How do mothers cope with that? I mean, it's your it's your daughter. Would the mothers approve as well? Uh, do you think the mother can decide? Uh, decide she can't the man? decide anything. No. no. She's a she's a she's a. She is just an ob an object. Women in Islam are just an object. Not nothing else. Yes. You have three daughters. You're worried for them. Absolutely. Otherwise, um, um, we, we just run away. I, the first, the first uh, thing I thought about it was my wife and my three daughters. You had to protect them, yeah. We just ran away and left everything behind. Why is Europe so politically correct? Why, if, if, if Muslims are recruiting ISIS fighters, even in Europe, why do they not stop the immigration? Why are they not stronger against the Muslim presence in Europe? I know in Germany, for example, there's this fear because of their Nazi history. They don't want to be accused of being hostile to foreigners. So there's a kind of cultural block. But I mean, there's France, there, there's, not, there's not just Germany, there's, there's Spain, there's England, there's uh, Austria, there's all these countries, Italy. And the Muslims are, are encroaching everywhere, you told me. Yes. Uh, we have, first of all, to break the wall of this political correctness in Europe. Otherwise, uh, Europe is not going to survive this century. Um, because, um, well, uh, the, the, the politician, they always uh, refer to uh, economical, uh, um, how would it say, the economic relationship. That's right. They, they refer always to the eco economical relation between the Islamic world. Oh, and oil and things like this. Yes. So, so that uh, they, they are not uh, willing to allow, not even uh, to criticize Islam, not even talk in the media about the cruelty of Islam. What about the media? The media don't talk about it either. Yeah, the media is controlled by the, by the government. Even though these are democracies, they're trying to be politically correct, is what you're saying. That's right. Uh, Islam um, is forcing them somehow. 
You said uh, economically. Some you said some politicians are even married to Muslims. Here. Yes. I mean, well, I don't I, mean I, just been, one or two, but yeah. it's becoming more and more frequent. I, I, I've, trying, I've been trying to find uh, out uh, a reason for 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 that. Why why polit uh, European politicians are uh, supporting the Islamization of, of, of Europe, and I, I find I found out that many of, of them are married with uh, is Islamic to Muslim uh, women. Women, yeah. Uh, one of them is, is uh, the, the head of the is SPD. Uh, Which the, is a social democratic party that's in right. Germany? In Germany. In Germany. So he's uh, one of the supporters of Islamization. And the social democratic party would be not like our Democrats in the United States. It's a leftist organization or a leftist political party, further left. That's right. And, and, and also the media are controlled by, by Muslims, by, by such people who are married with, with uh, Muslim women. Can you give me an example? Example is uh, Zweite Deutsche Fernsehen, the Generalintendant. The sec uh, second channel of German television. That's basically right. Basically the head. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how would you expect from the head of, of uh, such a huge uh, media like ZDF to allow yeah. a discussion CDF, about yeah. Islam in this medium. They're going to control it. Tell me about, uh, we, we were talking about um, the role of women in Muslim society or the lack of a role of women in society. I've heard it said that the Muslim uh, ideology, if you will, honors Mary. Why is that? And, and considers Christ a prophet because Christ would never have approved of any of this. Well, um, in Quran, it's uh, Jesus Christ is mentioned uh, in, in, as a prophet, but the difference between uh, Christ in Quran and in the Bible, uh, in Quran, it's uh, it's mentioned that he hasn't been crucified. So they don't believe he was crucified and rose from the dead. Yes. Uh, they said someone uh, looked like him, God made someone who looked like him, and they crucified the other one, not Jesus Christ. Very strange. Yes. And, and they honor Mary just because he was Christ's mother? That's right. And, uh, well, I was, as I, before I said, um, Muhammad was r raised also in the in a, in a, uh, environment of Christian, too. He was... Um, married to Khadija. Khadija was a Christian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that might be also one of the reasons. But he still said kill Christians even though he was married to one. So uh, it's astounding. It's astounding what you're telling me. We often hear uh, uh, almost, uh, it's, it's kind of something that you would see in editorial cartoons in the newspaper or something. It's almost a joke. But we hear about how Muslims um, believe that if they kill Christians, they're going to reach paradise and be given a certain number of virgins. Is this true? Yes. Well, well first of all, I just uh, want to mention a point. Uh, uh, Muslims are offended by cartoons. Ah, but the, like the, Just Sweet Charlie, for example. That's right. And they are not offended when they hear their fellows are cutting throats of non-Muslims. They so are, they're happy with beheadings and slitting people's throats. They are not they're offended, offended by cartoons. By by uh, um, satirical uh, cartoons, yes. No, no. I, I just wanted to say, uh, raping uh, non-Muslims, raping kids, all of these things. They don't. Uh, they don't want. They don't feel um, furious about it, but they are feeling furious. They are offended by cartoons. Um, and a cartoon is nothing compared to raping a child. So that's right. So back to your question. Uh, yeah, we were it? talking about how um, they're so indoctrinated or brainwashed. They actually believe that if they kill uh, non-Muslims, they're going to first reach paradise and second of all be given well one uh, virgin. How many virgins? The prophet of Muhammad, the prophet uh, of their their prophet Muhammad and. Uh, they are God, Allah, they promised them to uh, give them 72 uh, virgins in paradise. So each man who kills someone gives if 72 they, virgins. If they uh, 
apply to spread Islam all over the world. If they kill uh, the infidels, the unbelievers. Uh -huh. So, and every Muslim will be rewarded with 72 virgins in paradise. For every woman he married on this earth. He gets another one. If he married one woman, he will get only 72 mm -hmm. virgins. If he has four women, you can mm -hmm. multiply that by four. So... I don't understand the logic. Why? Well, that's their logic. Well, they, when, when they, they have to believe Muhammad uh, without discussion, whatever he says. So polygamy, they would marry women at the same time? Yes. So the more women they have, the better? Uh, all Muslims, they ha have the right to marry four women at the same time. Only Muhammad, he had, he had more than but he uh, was a 13, 13 women at the same time. Uh, that's, what, that's because he, he is a prophet. How do, I know, I know women really have nothing to say in this society, but if men are granted 72 virgins, what do they believe about women? Do women go to paradise? It's nothing mentioned in the Quran about uh, women. Nothing about women. No, uh, th that's not all. Not only seventy-two. Oh, um, there's more. Imagine if a Muslim has one wife, he has seventy-two virgins. By four, because he let's say has four wives, you multiply that by four. By four, then you multiply it by every woman, every virgin in paradise will have seventy-two servants which you said are not just servants, but are sex slaves, basically. That's right. So more, are they virgins too? They are like servants uh, of, of the virgins. They are also virgins. Oh my goodness. So you have to multiply four by 72, by 72, by 72. So uh, I, guess, I guess it's 19,600 sex objects for every Muslim. That's appalling. Who enter the paradise. So um, Muslims think nothing else about, uh, uh, but about sex, uh, uh, sex slaves in, in paradise. I had heard it said that before 9-11, some of those terrorists who ran into the Twin Towers uh, at Ground Zero were visiting prostitutes the night before. And as a Catholic Christian, I immediately thought, oh, that's terribly sinful. Uh, obviously, they didn't think that it was. I mean, it, 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 it's part of the same philosophy of using women as an object. Um, you hadn't heard that? I've heard about that. Um, uh, they, if they uh, rape a Christian or a Jewish or, or, one, uh, every, uh, or any woman who is not Muslim, uh, they are contributing to Islam. So no problem. They're fine. With that thought, we're going to take a break and we'll be back in a few minutes. Please join us again soon. Thank you for coming back and joining us for the conclusion of this program. I'm Deborah Pirock, and we're talking about Christian martyrs in the Middle East and the growing Muslim presence all across Europe. I'm here with um, Franco Paulus. And thank you again for staying with us for the conclusion of the program. 9-11 um, was a big day in the United States, and not just the United States. I know when the bomber slammed into the World Trade Center, uh, they, you know, they killed over 2,000 people, and the images were horrific. And every German I knew wrote me uh, an email. Um, now, may, in the Nepal uh, earthquake recently, many more people died, but the difference was these horrific pictures. Um, you said you feel that Muslims are making inroads everywhere. How are they making inroads, for example, in America? Well, I've noticed every time Islam or Muslim commit an atrocity, they um, gain uh, advantages. For example, for example, uh, three thousand uh, human beings have been killed in uh, on, on 9/11 and the World Trade Center, and afterwards, a huge mosque has been built just.
close to the uh, ground zero. Also, uh, after Charlie Hebdo in Paris. The Je suis Charlie with the editorial suis, Je suis Charlie. Uh, cartoon uh, that offended Mosley. That's right. They, uh, the um, European politician, Jay, just hugged the, uh, the Islamic representatives. You said Angela Merkel Angela was hugging. Merkel? Is yeah, yeah the, she has been. Uh, uh, she gathered all the Muslim representatives of Haglim, and uh, uh, she uh, supported them. Uh, I, I just didn't understand that. And she said that for the first time, she says uh, Islam goes to Europa, which, which is means means uh, Islam belongs mm -hmm. to Europe. Belongs to Europe. So they're forgetting about things like the Battle of Lepanto and how it was so hard to drive the Muslims out of Europe. Yes, I mean, at that time, the, the, the uh, Muslim, the Os Osmans, uh, they came, uh, they couldn't enter uh, Vienna uh, 19, uh, no, it's 15, uh, 25, and mm -hmm. 16, 83, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they, they wanted to penetrate the border of, of Europe. This time is going, uh, be dan much dangerous because, because there's they, no are, Catholic they are resistance. In, in the heart of Europe. They're already in the heart of Europe. So if they uh, arrange, uh, make an arrangement between uh, the Muslims in Europe and the, the outside, uh, the IS, so uh, it's not going to have the same result at that time. It's very dangerous for Europe. Are there other Iraqi Christians like yourself who are speaking out? I know, for example, you have a Facebook page. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, after, after uh, I've heard that Angela Merkel uh, said Islam <clears throat> gehört to Europa, uh, I established um, uh, a site on, on the Facebook, site. Mm -hmm. a Facebook site. I called it Islam gehört nicht zu Europa. Which means Islam does not does belong not to belong. Europe. Yes, mm -hmm. and I wrote a, an open letter uh, and, uh, to, to Angela Merkel is the Chancellor of Germany. The Chancellor of Germany. And the letter is, has, has been uh, read within in three weeks about 28,500 uh, times. It sounds like a record to me. Yeah, uh, people, I, I guess people are getting aware of, of what is going on. Are the reaction, because everyone can post a remark on Facebook, whether they like it or if they want to comment, what kind of comments do you get? Are they overwhelmingly positive or negative or just a mix? Well, uh, sure, uh, the European people, they are reacting, um, the majority of them, um, positively. They are um, uh, they're getting afraid of, of uh, what is going on, because I, I mentioned in this letter, I asked, I, I asked the uh, Chancellor Merkel not to get uh, this, my story be repeated in your continent. You're trying to actually help Europe so that it avoids mistakes uh, that uh, actually the Iraqis thought that they could have peace too at one time. Well, it wasn't Iraq then, but they thought that they could have peace with the Muslims. And obviously that didn't work out. And today they're trying political correctness and they're trying ecumenical ways. And you're saying this won't work. I guess um, as soon, as long as Islam is in the minority, they are still peaceful. They're still, we're still safe. Yes. Uh, but if they uh, uh, across the border of, of, of minority, they get majority, they will they will have to kill other non-Muslims. Uh, that belongs to their uh, ideology. They have to, f to fulfill, fulfill the commandment of their God and their prophet. And it's not like some of them will say, well, I'm a Muslim, but I'm not sh for Sharia law. They automatically are for Sharia law. Well, uh, a, a moderate Muslim might be not able or willing to kill you uh -huh. to kill me, but he will let the other Muslim, which is... Uh, more radical. More radical. Do it for him? Do it for him. And approve? Just, just as simple as that, yes. What kind of future do you hope for your family? I mean, do you expect to stay in Europe? 
do you think you'll have to leave Europe? Or do you just try not to think about that? I mean, I know you've got your wife and daughters to protect. Well, uh, if it, is, it, it continues this way, uh, Europe isn't going to be safe anymore. Um, at the time being, we, are, uh, we feel safe somehow. But when my daughters go to the, to the uh, schools and they bring the brochures of, of uh, school, they, they are kind of, of uh, uh, missions for Islam and uh, in, in the uh, literature of uh, school. You meaning just asking people to send no, money? No, they are saying, they are telling, they are uh, putting um, Islam uh, equal to, to Christianity. So and they the, mean... They, these they, are not Christian nations. Well. I mean, these are Christian nations originally, but they're, they're not Christian anymore. No, no, uh, the, the Islamic, uh, they they telling kids in the school that Islam is a peaceful, uh, a peaceful uh, religion like, like Christianity. And it's not? It's not. That's a big failure. You said when you left your home and you had to flee, uh, you still get emotional about that. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm now, um, uh, emotional. I, when, whenever I remember that time, I, I always get emotional. I can't uh, get uh, above that. It's, um, it will need time to, to how um, to deal happens. with those feelings. To deal with these feelings exactly. Because you can never go back to your homeland. You can never be living in Mosul. There is at again. the time being uh, no perspective to go back. Ever, and this is your homeland. Yeah, I mean, I mean, no, we, even even if I, if the war is uh, over, what should I do there? I mean, uh, I lost everything. I have to begin uh, with zero. Again. Again. And you've uh, already done that. Yes, I'm I'm 58 years now, and I have no energy uh, <laughs> as a 20 year old uh, man. Yeah, it's a little easier when you're 20. Yes. But it's no safer for the 20-year-olds anymore. Not even for him, no. I mean... Uh, you said the popes basically just say pray, that there's not much else that, that, that one can do as a Catholic, but we yes. can pray for the Muslims. You prayed enough for us, yes. And, and pray for but, the conversion of Europe, the reconversion of Europe. What do you pray for? What I pray for? I, I pray for peace on the whole world, but um, according to the current situation, there will be no peace. And either we defeat Islam or Islam will destroy the whole world. It's just as simple as that. There is no option. Because it has the... Uh, its aim is to uh, control the whole, the entire world. That's written in Quran. They, it's it's uh, uh, the aim of of their God. We're going to stop on that note, that grim note. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing with us uh, your views as a Christian coming from Iraq about the dangers of uh, Muslim ideology, not just in the Middle East but across the whole West, and the threat that ISIS holds. Um, not a hundred years from now, not a generation from now, but now. And uh, we would ask all of our viewers and listeners to please pray for Christians who are in situations like our guest. Uh, they need many prayers. They have many martyrs. And the situation seems, at best, um, like it will be grim in the future. But with God, there is hope for everything. So on that note, thank you for joining me, Deborah Pirock, and please stay tuned to this station.